Hello everyone. Yeah, I hope you're being fruitful and experiencing the love and favor of the Lord wherever you are. You know, my my heart is grieved, you know, when I see all these people that teach falsehood, you know, whether knowing or not knowing. But I can't dwell on that now, you know. It's, um, I don't love the church of God more than him. Christ loves us more than we can even imagine, so I can't even pretend that. But you know, he doesn't, it grieves you, you know, when you see something like that. Anyways, today, today we have a question. Um, and this question is about work, you know, excellence at work. And um, let me read the email. This email came from a friend and um, she has a testimony even within the, the email. So I'm going to read part of the email. And um, yeah, she asked me to share this because she believes it can help all of us out there. And I believe too that this is a very great topic to talk about. If you have the time or, or if I can make a suggestion, would you do a video concerning why it is important for God's people to exercise excellence in our work? I say this because there are so many articles talking about this term called quiet quitting. I do not know if you've ever heard of it before, but it is when you go to work to do bare minimum, just enough not to get fired, and are completely disengaged with others. I see this all the time in my workplace, Mark. People show up to do just enough to not get fired from the job. And they do not give it their all and the people around them suffer. This topic has inspired me because I just received an email from a co-worker and I did not know the type of impact I was having on, on her until she sent it. Please allow me to share and she writes. So this is an email that she received. Um, so I don't know if I should mention the name, but let me use the name Anonymous. Hey, Miss Anonymous. I hope you check your Sinatra email because I know many don't. It's just been on my spirit and heart to talk to you. I know I'm starting out as a nurse and I'm finally finding my way. I just want to say sorry because it seems every time you get my patience I'm behind or the room looks like a hurricane hit it. It really bothers me that I do not have it all together when you get my patience because I really look up to you in a professional manner. I know I'm almost um, you know 40 but I'm a baby nurse compared to you and it's embarrassing how I can never have it a hundred percent when you are around. I am genuinely apologizing and I will try harder each time. I really meant when I said I wish I had your patient and kind spirit. My mother is a preacher and I tell her that and I tell her that all the time. That's how I knew you are into the Lord. Thank you for always being so kind and educating me when you have the chance. So, Anonymous continues and says, Mark, so you see, I feel people need to understand how important it is how we do our job. We, rep we represent the Lord 
and I know he is, a ser he is serious about the expectations of his people. We are supposed to be excellent in everything he has called us to do because people are always watching. So if you feel compelled, I would love to hear your thoughts on this and I'm sure it will bless others on your channel. Um, Mark, let me end with this. I know we are human and we struggle with things, but I believe for some people, the only Bible they will know until they encounter Christ personally is seen in his people. Those that call themselves Christian through their faithful walk and example. Okay, so, um, I thank you so much, my dear friend, for, for this because it is something that is going, is going around the world, you know, this quiet quitting. I remember my wife has been going through something, you know, for the longest time she's been going through something. They have this, she has this colleague, this one particular colleague that doesn't do her work at the office. She's an office manager, but doesn't manage anything. It's other people, other colleagues that do her work, just keeps sitting there, you know, but get keeps getting paid. And I always ask my wife, I've always asked my wife, is that person your, is that person a Christian? You know, all the people that she has told me about at her workplace, you hear all these strange things and I'm like, are those people Christians? Is that person a Christian? For some reason, that, that was my question. Because I believe I wouldn't expect something like that from a Christian. Imagine being a Christian. You love God. Excuse me a little, friends. Little mama wants to sleep, I guess. So, I believe if we say we are Christians, it's so strange if somebody says they're a Christian, you know, at church, they, they smile, they portray this good image. But when it goes to their workplace, let's say they are a boss at work, they shout at everyone, they, you know, it is strange. And Christ talks about it, you know, how servants should you know, be obedient to their masters and masters to treat their servants, you know, with respect and with love, you know. So you wonder, wonder what this means I'm trying to seek that scripture um, Ephesians 6 let's first go to Ephesians 6 I have a lot of scriptures by the way lined up in this regard so uh, so Ephesians 6 go. Ephesians 6 5 it says Advice, advice to servants and masters. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart, as unto Christ, not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing with good will doing service, as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man does, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And you masters, do the same things unto them, forbearing, threatening, 
knowing that your master also in heaven neither is there respect neither is their respect of persons with him so he speaks to our servants to respect their masters not to just have lip service where your boss comes and you just smile you know but you do the will of god you do your job like you are serving christ because it's cheating when you go to work now like uh in my country because in, in the western here in south africa they don't provide lunch for you well some 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 entities provide lunch you know may, probably when you're a public serv- uh, servant i think they provide lunch but for me where i come from you are paid they give you an allowance and you are also accommodated your your, your meals are facilitated you know so imagine if someone does all that for you they give you an allowance you know for your transportation and all then they give you a salary on top of that then they also facilitate your meals and you still go to the job and don't work and that is so common back where i come from you know back in uganda i mean people are given everything when when they go to work but she would just go and sit at the office they go on their social media on their whatsapp on their facebook on their instagram and then they just work on one document and then they get there's a whole pile there's a lot of things that they should do they just don't care you know and at the end of the month because f- back there they do monthly they do a weekly they do a monthly report and they do an annual report you know so when the when the weekly report lacks a lot of stuff and the company is, is is lagging behind then the monthly then the annual and because the employees are not working and you're paying them you know imagine that being your work your business these are the things god is going to judge us by that we can claim we love people we can claim that we hey we save people we give to the poor we give to we give in church we pay tithe but how do you do at your job are you doing are you working at your job are you giving it your best are you excellent at your work are you faithful at your work because that's what god is going to bring out you are a robber you're robbing your boss and the same to the boss do you take advantage of your employees do you blackmail them do you want to sleep with the ladies do you want to sleep with the young men you know that work for you do you blackmail them do you shout at your employees people that have families people that have children and you treat them like trash like garbage and yet you claim you're a christian you can tithe you can give to the poor but once you have that that aspect of your life not sorted you're useless to god if i talk about oppression oppression at work because so many people will tell you they'll give you reasons valid reasons why they quietly quit at work and these reasons they sound quite genuine very genuine you'll be like yeah you're right how would you work in such an environment you know but let's go to the book of james james chapter 1 and see what james talks about oppression trials and tribulation because we're going to be tried in this life from all aspects at our work at home with our kids at home with a spouse in your marriage out when you socialize now on social media you share something and someone comes out bashing you like you are whatever whatever you know don't like what the video you did ah uh, it didn't look good you, you didn't come you didn't you, you, you know you have a big nose you i mean people throwing all kinds of comments out there to hurt each other and um yeah you're tested with how you reply in all this but here's what james says james chapter 1 rejoice under trials james a servant of god and of the lord jesus christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad 
Greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So all these trials at work, they're supposed to be, because you'll be tried at work. They're trying your, your faith. You're a Christian. Someone has come at your table and they have thrown files on your table that are not supposed to be yours. Or your boss unfairly doesn't care about your side of the project. They just keep giving you this workload, you know. You're overworked. How do you endure that? Do you take days off at work? Do you call in sick? Do you mistreat another, another that's below you? You know, and you take advantage of them. Or you simply swallow and you take it up. Because this is the enemy trying you. He's using your boss. He's using your colleagues. When those other colleagues are talking about someone at work, you know, strange rumors. Do you join in? Most people when they are, you know, on the lunch break, at the water cooler, you know, usually, there's a lot of stories that come, that come up then. Do you engage in such foolishness? This is all the trying. He says, Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Sometimes you're a boss, you are tempted to fire someone. You know this is the only job they have. They're not taking their job serious. Speak to them, talk to them, warn them. But don't just outrightly fire them immediately because of your feelings. You're a boss, you're tempted to take advantage of someone at your work. Are you going to take it up or you're going to recognize that, hey, I'm a child of God, I'm a Christian, this is not how I'm supposed to live. Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13. God's people make a difference. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. but on a candlestick and it gives light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We're supposed to be ministers. We always claim that, hey Lord, I'm more busy with work. I don't have, I don't really have time to go and evangelize. I don't have time to go and make videos, to preach, to share with people. But you have people at work to minister to, through your excellence, through your actions. My friend sent me a message and she said, when that co-worker sent her the message, the email, and said, I, I see through your patience and kindness that the Lord, that you are with the Lord. That was enough. That was ministry. We're supposed to minister through our actions. It's not just lip service that, hey, I love God. God is amazing. Uh, he healed me, he healed my child. Um, yes. Even your way of life is supposed to reflect God because that is how it's going to provoke. That is how it's going to challenge. That is how it's going to minister to people around you. And mostly 
in the work environment. We are the salt. Why you go to the to the workplace and there's no salt there, there's no flavor? You are the flavor. You are the one people should run to at work when they want to quit. You are the one people should run to to take inspiration. They might be better than you, but your attitude will challenge them. They will say, hey, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you st stick to this job day in, day out. You have kids, you have a family, you have this. That's when you speak to them and you tell them, hey, but it's not about me, it's about God. You know, God presents ways for us to minister to people every single day before us. It's up to us to take it up. People think the gospel is, hey, let me go proclaim and shout out in the streets. It's not about that. We proclaim the gospel of God with our actions first, but we challenge that which is around us. And you see, the thing is that he calls us the salt and the light. How are you the light? Where you work? You serve God by being excellent at what you do. I hope when you listen to this, it encourages you, it wakes you up, it strengthens you to wake up and be like, Lord, how have I, how have I never seen this? Because you see, to some people, they have already messed up at work. Everyone hates you. But now it's, that's even better because people will see the change in you. You wake up and you're like, hey, you can go and apologize to people you've hurt at work. They'll be shocked. They'll be like, what? You know? You can go and apologize to them and move forward. An apology doesn't kill. And that's what the enemy does. He's like, I've abused so and so, I've accused so and so, I've done this to these people, I can't change. Now, if you fear people, embarrassment from people, then the Spirit of God is not going to work in you. That is what they call dying to, the, to yourself, bearing your cross daily. Bear that cross. Let them laugh as long as God invites you in. And he says, my child, I love you. No matter what you did in the past, now you're different. Walk, move forward and walk in the new light. That is what God requires us of us, you know. So, quiet quitting, start looking at that different. I know there are so many reasons we have, but even Christ has commandments in his word. We have seen what he says. God bless you and be fruitful wherever you are.